Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, March 16th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for giving us this day, giving us this opportunity, giving us the opportunity to learn more about you, to learn more about how we are commanded to share you with others. We pray, Father God, that we do be a comfort to others. We pray, Father God, that each and every day we look forward to sharing you with someone, taking advantage of every opportunity to share Jesus. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We are in Luke 21, 25 through 38, with titles such as Christ's Glorious Coming, The Believer's Redemption, Avoiding Worldliness. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. 25 through 28 is talking about well, Jesus' first coming was lived under humble circumstances. However, his second coming will be dramatic, powerful, seen by all, and when we least expect him to come back. For non-believers, it will be a day of judgment. However, for those who have put their faith in him, it will be a day of glorious redemption. As believers, our attitude should be one of hopeful anticipation as we wait his return. As we wait his return, be encouraged to spend more time in prayer, spend more time in the Bible, spend more time comforting others, spend more time sharing Jesus with others. Be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. Let not you worry about any regrets. You know, most of us spend our longest amount of prayer possibly in the evening. So in the evening, you know, we hopefully we are praying throughout the day, especially when we come upon circumstances that I think I need to pray about this, or maybe even you see something that you need to pray about, or maybe even someone asks you to pray for them. But in the evening, possibly when your prayers are the longest, reflect on how your day went. Reflect on, did you have any regrets? And pray that the following day, when you go to your long prayers in the evening, you have less regrets. So think about, you know, do we want do we want to have regrets? Do we want to not be ready for the second coming? Prepare for the second coming. Spend more time with Jesus and spend more time sharing Jesus with others. In 29 through 38, we have Jesus assuring us of the certainty of his return nearly 2,000 years ago, he tells us to watch and pray. Matthew 28 tells us, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus is with us. He's been with us. He is with us, and he will continue to be with us. Let's focus on being with him also. Spend more time with Jesus. Give Jesus all the time that he gives us. 
In Revelation 21, we have a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. While waiting, some may take his words, his promises, and his warnings lightly and continue to indulge in the things of this world. We have to make choices every day. Are we choosing the world? Are we choosing Jesus? We, we are to be careful not to be distracted by the things of the world. Rather, continue to spend time in prayer for others and ourselves, which keeps us focused on God. Not to say that we need to pray 24-7, because while we do need to pray, we also do need to be out in the world and encouraging others, praying for others. It's not all only about us. It's about others also. Those whom you have a relationship, and even those who you don't have a relationship with, have a relationship with others. Seek out others to draw them closer to God. The issues of our lives during troubling times can weigh us down, cause anxiety and or stress, overburden us, and send us away from God. But it is during these times we should go to God for strength, compassion, love, and reach out to also comfort others. And even though we want to reach out and comfort others, maybe you need to be comforted. Maybe I need to be comforted. We need to be comforted also sometimes because being a Christian is not easy. And it was never said that it would be easy. So maybe we need to be comforted. When you need to be comforted, reach out to someone. Reach out to someone and tell them what you're struggling with. Ask them to pray with you. Ask them to pray for you. We all need comfort. And at different times, for different reasons, we all need comfort. And go to each other. Go to Jesus. Spend time in prayer. Let, again, let this not be a time that you turn your, turn your face from God. Be motivated to obey Jesus and work diligently to tell all people of the salvation he offers. Jesus came to earth to take all of our sin to the cross every single one of us people you don't even know jesus went to the cross for them so share with them be comforted by them and ask to be comforted also be careful or your hearts will be weighed with carousing drunkenness and anxieties of life and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap it says in 34 so be careful be prepared, be aware, and go to Jesus to handle it, to get through it. We've talked many times about what God brings you to, he will bring you through. And encourage others that same scripture. If he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Not only will he bring you through it, but you will be strengthened by it. So be encouraged to strengthen others. Spend time with others who you know are struggling. Maybe someone you haven't seen for a while. Maybe someone who hasn't been at church for a while. Give them a call. We've also talked about that. Someone that hasn't been at church for a while, when they do come, don't be like, oh, we missed you. Where have you been? Just say, welcome. Jesus loves you. God bless you. Don't be hanging it around them that, oh, they noticed that I was missing. Let them see that you are just happy to see them happy to see them come into the presence of God always have a smile on your face always be welcoming always be cheerful always be the light in the darkness let's pray father God we thank you so much that each and every one of us have come out of the darkness 
But we pray, Father God, that each and every one of us be bold and shine the light within us so that each person who sees us, maybe they're struggling, maybe they're not, maybe they don't know you, but that they see your light and maybe they'll ask, where does that light come from? Why are you so happy? What do you have that I don't have? Let us be bold, Father God, and let us spend the time needed to help someone who is struggling. Let us encourage others with your word, with your promises, with your love, with your faithfulness. We thank you, Father God, for giving us all of these reminders by your Holy Spirit that you are with us and you will be with us to the end. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Be a blessing to someone. God bless you. Bye-bye.